Welcome to The Real News Network. I'm Paul Jay, a drum roll. Please, we're at the final segment of 23 Things They Don't Tell You About Capitalism with Ha Jun Chang. Thanks for joining us again. Thank you. All right, so we're winding it up. Mm. Thing 22, financial markets need to become less, not more efficient. So mm. that's not what we're being yeah, told. That's right, yeah. Well, uh, you know, in the last uh, two, three decades, uh, all over the world, but especially in the US and Britain, where I live, this idea has uh, spread that uh, finance is the new engine of growth, and the best way to let uh, the financial market work is uh, to deregulate it. And you know, a huge amount of uh, wealth has been built on that uh, platform, only to completely collapse uh, in the autumn of uh, 2008. Now, after the financial crisis, uh, some people have uh, came out, uh, come out. Uh, arguing that, look, I mean, that we you know, should have uh, that regulated this better, so let's uh, make it more efficient by making it more transparent and, you know, I mean, uh, get, uh, get rid of uh, insider dealing and so on. But uh, there's uh, fundamentally really nothing wrong with you know, the market. It's uh, just that uh, information is not flowing and that there were insider dealings. Actually, this is a completely wrong way of uh, looking at it because the problem with the financial market of today is not that it is inefficient, but it's too efficient, but efficient for the wrong things. Yeah? Right, efficient right, in creating uh, the speculative gains, uh, efficient in moving money around, basically for the sake of uh, making quick profit rather than you know, channeling it uh, to long-term productive investment. Yeah? So the, it's uh, the purpose uh, for which uh, these things are used uh, that is the problem, and not its kind of slowness or lack of transparency. And so actually, the, if you have too much uh, transparency, the, we are overwhelmed by the information. You know, it's not because uh, there was no information that uh, people made all these uh, shady dealings and speculative uh, the, uh, investments and so on. Uh, it's, uh, Exactly because uh, the incentives were rigged in the way that, that I mean, those things are paid much, much better than investing and patiently kind of training your workers and developing your technologies. So it's not so much about efficiency at all. It's about is the finance sector actually going to have some useful social purpose? Or exactly. Not? Efficiency for whose sake? You know? I mean, yes, very efficient uh, if you're a a yeah, big uh, the, the banker, big uh, uh, hedge fund manager. Yeah, we, we, don't, we, we don't want banks to more efficiently plunder the rest of the exactly. economy yeah. even more. <laughs> right. Okay, number 23, the end of 23 things. Good e economic policy does not require good economists. What do you mean by that? Well, yes, uh, that may be very popular among my colleagues. Uh, you know, I bought my union card with that chapter, <laughs> so to speak. Uh, well, you know, that there's this uh, the belief, uh, especially the, in developing countries, that, that uh, in order to run the better economic policies, you need PhDs from Harvard, PhDs uh, in economics from MIT and Oxford and so on. But uh, actually, the, when you look at, the, for example, the, the so-called miracle economies of East Asia, these were all run by non-economists. Yeah? In China, the leadership of the yeah, party there's are all engineers. Yeah, so. exactly. I mean, in China and Taiwan, the, the, not, not just the political leaders, but also the, these guys who run the Ministry of Finance, Ministry of Industry, and so on, they are all the engineers and scientists. In Japan, these were mostly lawyers. In Korea, I mean, the, we had the more economists than the, the Japan did in proportional terms, but the, the lawyers were also the, the very, very the, the predominant. So th actually, the, these the, the examples uh, make you think, yeah? I mean, the, the, how yeah, come well, these people who have uh, no professional the, the background in the economics could actually engineer economic miracle, whereas uh, the United States with economics uh, PhDs uh, coming through his uh, nose, I mean, has and we're so surprised economy. when the thing crashed because exactly, yeah. it didn't fit all their theories. That's right, yeah. So the, basically, the, the, we have to understand that the kind of economics that has uh, dominated the world uh, in the last uh, 20, 30 years, uh, free market economics, is very actually bad for the economy. Eh? It's that, that uh, you know, <laughs> 
John Kenneth Galbraith uh, once uh, quipped that the economics uh, is only good for creating employment for, employment for economists. But <laughs> basically, the, the kind of economics that uh, we have been taught as the only truth, you know, only right kind of economics, is actually very bad for economic uh, the development and uh, good economic performance. All right, so just to wind things up quickly, after writing the book, mm -hmm. what are the three or four things you think are needed? for a healthier economy? Oh, first of all, we have to get rid of this uh, market fundamentalist ideology. I mean, this belief that even when half your you know, the banks uh, have gone bankrupt, even when all your car companies have gone bankrupt, you still believe that private sector is always better than the government. You know, I mean, that kind of ideology first uh, have to go. Yeah? Secondly, the, we need the more aware citizens. Yeah? I mean, the, actually, the, that is uh, exactly the reason why I wrote this book. You know, as I say in the book, 95% of uh, economics is actually common sense, of course, deliberately made complicated by professional economists. And even the remaining 5%, uh, people can understand its uh, basic logic, if not all the technical details. Despite that, people are scared of economics. Yeah? Economists have uh, that create, uh, basically figured out a way to scare other people off. So when the economic issues come up, people become very kind of uh, defensive and they say, oh, it's uh, not for me, it's uh, too technical. But we have to know these things uh, to blow these people's cover. Yeah? I mean, actually, and, uh, these people... People don't know these things. They have no idea what public policy is actually in their own interest. Exactly. But, uh, you know, that when you think about it, that people make all kinds of judgments on really big issues without any professional qualification. I mean, uh, you know, I have my view on Iraq war, but, you know, do I have a PhD in international relations? No. You know, I mean, I don't have a, a PhD in epidemiology, but I still uh, demand that uh, our you know, restaurants uh, should have a hygiene standard. Yeah? So actually, that you need to th th see it that way. I mean, that people need to learn some basic uh, economics. When I say basic, I don't mean necessarily dumb down. I mean, uh, I mean uh, the fundamental logics yeah? and some basic facts, like yeah, despite taking two and a half times uh, more of uh, the national income, the American rich have uh, failed to produce uh, more investment and growth and so on. Only when they know those things that uh, they can become what I call in the book active economic citizens. Yeah? So we need that, that to the encourage people to acquire this knowledge yeah, have a debate, yeah, have an informed uh, the discussion so that uh, they can become uh, genuine economic citizens. Well, we're going to do a lot more of that on The Real News. Thanks so. very much for joining us, Hajun. Hey, and thank you for joining us for 23 Things They Don't Tell You About Capitalism on The Real News Network.